It's a farce. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Dick Stone. Yep. Okay, so I'm Alistair Beresford. I'm from the Bender Residents Association. So, in terms of design ideas, we looked at whether, uh, in fact, the cycle we could avoid compulsory purchase of the land, and whether the cycle ways could be maintained at 1.5 metres throughout, and perhaps a maintained at the foot of the cycle. So we looked at whether we could uh, maintain cycle lanes at 1.5 metres for the entire length and uh, maintain the width of the footpath so that we could avoid purchasing land uh, compulsorily. We talked about whether providing an additional phase of lights at, for example, Gilbert Road uh, to give a head start for cyclists, as we see in other places around the city, or consideration of the design idea from Matthew Danish about the Gilbert Road, Histon Road uh, junction that was being circulated this evening also looked good. Um, we also talked about whether a partial bus lane might provide most of the advantages whilst being both cheaper and saving land and trees. Mm -hmm. And in terms of design concerns, from the disability perspective, uh, there was concern about whether raised cycleways are difficult for wheelchair users and those with walking difficulties. And consideration therefore should be given to flat surfacing where possible to ease that problem. Uh, also we heard tonight about the fact that we're only having about seven buses an hour running down uh, the bus lane. So for the daily periods of congestion, which are sort of between 30 minutes and an hour, let's call it 45 minutes, in the morning and again the similar period in the evening, we're talking about 10 buses benefiting from this bus lane, or less than 1,000 people. And there are about 1,000 people living along Houston Road and its nearby neighbourhood. So on the one hand, this is potentially a benefit for those commuting in, but it's also a severe, a severe problem for the residents. And again, a cost analysis here will be useful. And finally, why are we building a bus lane without a park and ride at the north end of Histon Road, which might actually then provide us with the volume of buses and also the viable alternative for cars uh, to stop off there and get on the park and ride mm -hmm. rather than seven buses an hour. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so move it along. Sure. about congestion charge, maybe some way of making, um, uh, subsidizing bus fares to get, so it's easier for people to take the bus, cheaper for people to take the bus. Um, so I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. Uh, get rid of the bus lanes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Separate the cyclists at the Histon Gilbert Junction, and maybe congestion charge to subsidize bus fares. Um, we're concerned that buses, again, coming down Histon Road from King's Hedges end, they're dumped into the south portion with no particular place to go. Um, not sure how that's going to improve things very much. Um, we thought cyclists needed two, mil two meters minimum with really um, to encourage more people to cycle and make it safer. And um, we do think parking rides um, are a good thing. I mean, there's supposed to be one at Girton, and we wondered again about one. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and okay. um, we talked about a lot of things. I'm not going to go over the things that have been said by other groups because we all want to go home. Um, but one of the suggestions was in terms of joining up. If there's a need to get people from outside of Cambridge into Cambridge on buses, we think the Histon Road isn't the best way of doing this. 
if you're coming in on the guided bus into um, Histon by the railway station, there's then Greenfield land that takes you joining up with Nyab land. There's already a bridge over the A14 um, that Nyab uses that could take you quite straightly and directly down to the Huntington Road. Now this could be built into the master plan at the stage. It'll be cheaper. You're going to compulsory purchase land, purchase it off Chivers and Barretts, not people with established trees in their gardens. And then you could have um, all the benefits of the cycleway increasing um, people's access to the countryside, riding, bikes, walking, um, that you have with very wide um, cycle paths alongside the busway plan through there. So that was one of the suggestions um, that we had. We have two, so bus gates apparently is the term for traffic lights that hold up the other traffic, so bus, mm -hmm. buses can go through, which is a more effective use of land maybe than bus lanes. Um, attractive um, green space for all the reasons, air quality, um, safety, all those that have been mentioned, and again, a, a park and ride and a park and cycle point um, that you could have. And if there is going to be a cycle scheme introduced through that city, you'd be able to pick up a cycle, you don't even need to own one. Um, other things, sometimes cyclists need to turn right, really sorry, you can't get everywhere you want going left. So a detailed point on the Borrowdale crossing is you need to make provisions for cycles to turn right, because that's the only point to access the whole of Arbury from Histon Road, um, uh, up until between Gilbert Road and Roseford Road. Um, we think there are risks around shared use bus stops, which basically means a bit of a free-for-all, I think, for cyclists and pedestrians. And um, <coughs> there are more housings being built on, uh, just above the Carisbrook Road Junction. There's planning permission for 27 houses, so your maps need to add a raised area for um, uh, in the yellow, whatever the yellow denotes, um, as well. Um, and I think it's really important that as you go forward through all of the things, think about the thing, not just about the specifics, because we felt like the maps that we've been given were very narrow. And actually, the problem isn't on this map. It's, it's out here. It's it's North Stow. It's all the villages. It's all the connectivity coming through. So that was okay. very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, last last group. Um, <clears throat> um, so I won't reiterate what's already been said about bus lanes, but um, one new feature that we discussed was the idea of having a bi-directional cycle lane on what would be the west side um, of um, Histon Road, between Brownwood Road and Carisbrook Road, um, because of the number of children that cycle on that side. And the fact that if they are to use a carriage road, a cycle on the other side, they need to have crossings at all of the junctions, and that would hold up traffic more. So actually, probably the right thing to do is to put a, a two-way cycle lane on that side, but still keep a, a, a single southbound cycle lane on the other side. Um, we looked at how you could um, fit a cycle lane of a sufficient width and have it separated from the main carriageway. We really want to encourage more cycling from underconfident young people. But actually, the, what makes the difference is having the cycle lane separate from the carriage, where so there is no danger of, of, of collision. And once you want, to, if you want to do that, uh, you, there really is no space for a bus lane. Um, and if you were, if you were to do it here, you'd have three meters of cycle lane. Um, if you if you do separate it from the carriage, then actually it'll be slightly narrower, probably 1.8 meters. Um, if you have 1.8 metres for the footway and for the cycle, cycle lane, and 3 metres for the two-way one, you do still have a reasonable amount of space <coughs> left for, for the trees, um, mm -hmm. and especially at the, um, where, where there are established trees, uh, where it's already considering where the verge is already quite wide, um, we'd actually be able to, to, to possibly retain the trees that are there already. Um, <coughs> if they were to be replaced, there would be plenty of, plenty of space left to read. Um, at the Gilbert Road Junction, um, it seems uh, very odd to remove the right filter into uh, Gilbert Road because uh, certainly in the evening where you've got traffic turning right there, uh, it, it, as it's drawn, they, they would hold up the traffic that wants to go out of the city so that will actually cause a lot of congestion. So putting a right filter there seems, uh, seems essential, really. Um, I think that's... Thanks.
much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thanks all very much for coming again. Uh, uh, can I assure you, everything that's uh, been written down or mentioned on the plan and said tonight will be collated into a very thorough report. I went to the Milton Road Local Creative Forum to follow their first four workshops, and it was a very comprehensive uh, report collating all the notes that came out of their, their work workshops. So we'll be doing the same uh, for Histon Road. Um, after the next two workshops in this um, first phase of workshops that we have. So be assured that all your comments will be taken into account and then we'll go through the process as we go to the two workshops to follow, the review workshop and mitigation workshop, uh, and when we get presented in the assembly and the board to city deal. Was there anything else particularly you want to say to us just to? No, not really. Yeah. Just to say that thanks very much for the time <coughs> and the contribution you've made and we will take these points on board. And as, um, as Mike said, we will feed that back to the LLF um, when you next meet. So um, having a useful contribution tonight. So thank you to everybody who came. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Mike. Uh, finished it on time. Thank you. Yeah. Nicely all. When you've actually got to be out by. No. So you've got ten minutes. It's got ten minutes to pack up and get ten our stuff. Ten minutes to pack up, right. Just a quickie. Um, as far as who is here at this meeting, I've got to 